eight, number eight. Psalm eight. And it reads, David starts off this song by giving God praise, saying, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. This is my favorite part. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And what is the son of man and the son of man that thou visits him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. That means we have victory in everything that we face. Hallelujah. All things are under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever pass through the paths of the sea. And he ends it with praise again, saying, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is that name in all the earth. Come on, bless be God's word. Amen. I need you to tell somebody, tell your neighbor right now. Say, neighbor, I can't speak for you. But after reading this word, I know today that I am valuable to God. Give God praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise today. We give you glory just because you are God. You're sovereign. You're wonderful. You are magnanimous, Lord God. And there's none like you, Lord God. We praise you because your name is excellent. Your name is glorious. Your name is awesome. And you're worthy to be praised, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for opportunities. Hallelujah. Thank you for the gathering of the saints today, Lord God. Bless our gathering continuously, Lord God. From the head down in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, bless us as we speak this word, Lord. Anoint us like never before today, Lord God. And help your people to hear a word that they may apply it. Apply it to their daily living in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, tell your other neighbor. Neighbor, I'm valuable to God. Brother or sister sound man, if you can, please raise this, this volume up on this microphone, please. Thank you, Lord. Now, it is my belief that God, in his holy essence, values our total being, both spiritually and physically, because his word says that he created us in his image and likeness. Amen? Right. Before God's last desire for mankind which is plainly stated by John's third epistle when he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. That means continuing to prosper on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Now, in my personal opinion, as a result of this particular scripture, especially in this day and age that we live in advanced technology as well as information. Uh, we find all over the television, especially uh, within these past 15 to 20 years, we find all over the television the prosperity gospel being preached, being taught time after time. Am I worried about that somebody? Uh, there are also countless beneficial programs, books, and various ways to become physically healthier, as well as even financially stable and fatter. Right. Yeah. Amen? Uh, yeah. And with that said, to my first point, and hopefully I won't be up here long. I'm not going to lie to you saying we're not going to be here long. We're just going to hope. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to hope. And let God say what they're going to say. Amen? <laughs> but in my first point, and I will stress to you, and I believe this with all my heart, 
is that God will always provide for his children. I affirm that. God, no matter what, God will always provide for his children. I grew up in church all around Cleveland hearing the words to a song saying, we are our heavenly father's children and he loves us one and all. That means everybody in this room. And I specifically, I specifically believe that. And it's my personal belief that as long as we have the house of God in the earth realm, and as long, and as long as we, the people of God, house God's spirit, God's spirit in our bodies, the economy, and I want you to hear it, the economy, regardless of the staggering effects that we will feel, regardless of its effects, the economy will never fail us. I'm going to prove it to you. The Bible strictly says, Paul said, that my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Also, according to the first and second chapter of Genesis, God's earthly manifested and visible riches were already set in the earth realm to never run out. They, were to ne they are never running out. Amen. Just as his grace and, and just as his mercy endures forever, so does the things that he has put in his earth realm. They are to never run out. Are you hearing me, somebody? So regardless of the staggering effects, God will always take care of us. Amen. The things that were put in the order long before mankind was ever created was set in orders just for us to enjoy it. Am I right about that, somebody? Therefore, God will always use the world's economy, regardless of this roller coaster ride. And I'm sure all of us have felt that within these past 19 to 20 years. Am I right about that, somebody? Regardless of its roller coaster ride, God will always use the economy. He always has used the economy. And God will continue to use the economy. Therefore, regardless of what's going on in the world even today, as long as we, the people of God, apply our living to the word of God, we are guaranteed provision all of our lives. If, if, if Abraham was able to talk to his son by faith, telling him that God will provide, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering and provides a ram in the thicket to offer up to him, then surely God today, God today will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. If God used Joseph to take care of his brothers as well as his father during a worldwide famine, then God is the same God today that shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. If the children of Israel were able to go through a wilderness experience being fed manna from heaven and was able to drink water from a rock, then truly he's the same God today that shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. If God was able to provide a brook for Elijah to drink from and use a bird for, for the prophet to have something to eat, then truly today, truly today, God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. If the widowed woman at Zarephath was obedient enough to fix Elijah's food first, and God makes a way out of nowhere to provide for her and her son to eat many days and their oil never run out, then God is the same God today that can and will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. With 5,000 plus people that followed Jesus just to hear the word of God were all fed from two fish and five loads of bread, then God is the same God today that shall supply all of our needs, and he supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Am I right about that, somebody? Hallelujah. If you trust, I believe, if you trust God and have faith in him, he will supply the need. Do you believe that? He will supply the need. If you depend on God, he will make a way out of no way. And if you believe him, he will provide for you in ways that, that seems impossible. 
I heard it like this in the song. God specializes in things that seem impossible. How many of you heard that? As a matter of fact, how many of you believe that? God specializes in things that seem impossible because he can do what no other power can do. Hallelujah. Therefore, I tell you like another hymn writer said, be not dismayed. Whatever be time. Because God will take care of you. He needs his wings of love of God. God will take care of you through every day and along the way. He will take care of you. Somebody can testify like David in here that says, I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed bread and bread. Some of us can say that God has been mighty good to us. God has been mighty good to us in the, in the midst of a famine. God has been mighty good to us when we were down and out. God has made a way out of no way when we couldn't see how he was going to do it. Because he loves us one and all. Am I right about that, somebody? Tell somebody, God will always supply his need. He will supply your need. Hallelujah. Therefore, to, to go to my second point, God will cleanse us and endow us with power by the water of his word. I strictly believe that. And I'm so glad. Uh, to take a side by him, I'm so glad that my father is here today. Yeah. I'm so glad because I never thought that he would be playing for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't felt that in a million years, but we, we thank God. <clears throat> so God will cleanse us and will indeed endow us with power by the water of his word. Give you a little bit of, give you a little bit of revelation. Water, as we as most of us might know, water is the most important liquid substance yeah. in the earth. Yeah. It is the most essential substance, not only for mankind, but to all known forms of life. Yeah. Water covers 70% of the earth's surface. Our bodies that we're housed in is made up of, of about 60 to 70% water. Uh, our lungs, our muscles, and our brains contains lots of water. Uh, water regulates our body temperature. It transports oxygen to cells. It removes waste and protects our joints and organs so that we can move and dance and shout like we did down the street. And lastly, water with, with, with soap and toothpaste keeps our bodies and mouths clean. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible clearly states, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. As important water is to man and to all known forms of life, so is the water of God's word and important to our spiritual lives as well as our natural lives. Thanks, I'm here to tell you that we need the water of God's word to regulate our mind and emotions when we're facing troublesome times. We need the water of God's word to give us direction. And if we allow God to take control, he will always give us his reassuring word just so that we can openly and boldly affirm his word. Just like David did in Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Come on, somebody know the word other than me? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and staff comforts me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. You can boldly affirm that when he gives you a reassuring word that he's going to come through for you. That he's going to make a way for you. Am I right about that, somebody? Since it's the water of God's word that cleanses and refreshes our being. Because the word tells us that we are sanctified by the washing, by the water of the word. The water of God's word, saints, is the only thing that can cleanse us from sin. That's why I open up to you today that I'm, I'm, regardless of whatever I experience, I'm so glad to be saved. I 
I'm so glad to be saved. Above all things, I'm so glad to be saved because I know where I'm going from here. I never have to think about it. I never have to question it. Because I'm in, I'm in right relationship with the Father. How about you today? Hallelujah. 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 The water of God's word renews us. It refreshes us. That's what David said. Wash me when he was repenting uh, unto the Lord. He said, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Saints, I can't speak for you, David. But I don't mind, me personally, I don't mind being cleansed daily from my sin. As long as he's washing me thoroughly and sanctifying me holy. I want to be like the hymn said. He said, when he shall come in with trumpet sound, oh may I then and him be found. Because I want to be dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless to stand before the throne. That is my desire. How about yours? It is the water of God's word that keeps life even in the body. But the Bible says, Jesus said to the to, to the uh, to the adversary, he said that man cannot live. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And truly today, some of us in here are living and breathing right now because somebody, because the word of God was spoken over our lives. How about that? Some of us in here have heard the word live, and we're living again. Some of us heard the word do it again, and we're doing things again. Some of us heard the word keep fighting and don't quit, and we're still going. Some of us heard the word the sickness that we might be dealing with is not unto death, and we're still here. Hallelujah. Some of us have heard the word stand still and stand strong, and we're still standing today in the midst of whatever's going on. Some of us heard, trust me, and have faith, and the Lord has come through it. Am I right about that, so much? Hallelujah. It is the water of God's word that keeps us rooted and grounded. And if you love him, it's the water of God's word that will keep you wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in him. Because it is in him that we move. It is in him that we live. We move and have our being. It's the water of God's word that, he, that we even inherit the kingdom of God. Because the Bible says we, we, we inherit the kingdom of God if we're born again of the water and of the spirit. That's why it's important for us to have the Holy Ghost. It's important for us to have the Holy Ghost. We are drawn by his word. We are saved by his word. We are changed daily by his word. We are led and guided by his word. And fortunately, we are all filled with God's spirit by his word. Hallelujah. God made it, God made it so valuable to, it, to himself. That when we corporately come together in the sanctuary with one mind and with one accord, as the saints did on the day of Pentecost, our prayers, our praise, our worship goes up to God from our bodies as a water vapor. We know that in earth science, that being called precipitation, because water evaporates and goes back up to the atmosphere. So as it means uh, naturally, as it and, and so it applies to us in the spirit, because whenever, whenever we create the habitation for the Lord to step in our midst, whenever we seek the face of God continually, whenever we give God complete control of our life, whenever we say yes to God's will, whenever we say yes to God's way, we send up to the atmosphere. Not 
open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Like you said, I have room enough to receive. Meaning that God will pour out one blessing in every situation of your life and fill you up with this.
endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you believe this, if you believe this, Jesus said, if you believe on me as the scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow the thing that God has placed in you. It's a run. It's a run outside of you. Meaning that you got to put it into action.